Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus the Tribble, who as usual is silent. Um, this video is going to be a bit of a double header. I'm going to be doing a quick review of the Nokia 2720 Flip 4G, which is a 4G dumb phone that runs KaiOS. Now, um, earlier I did a review of this guy, the Nokia 8110, which is also a 4G dumb phone that runs KaiOS. Um, if you want to, you can watch that video here. It's called 4G Dumb Phones Get One with KaiOS. And in that video, uh, I give kind of a quick overview of all the, you know, some of the menus and the features and options, privacy settings, and I talk a little bit about why it's not actually uh, a smartphone. It has some smart features like YouTube, even Google, uh, Google uh, Search. Uh, you can press and hold a button and speak to it, and it'll do, like, search queries for you, that sort of thing. Um, you can also have WhatsApp, Facebook, and Twitter at this point. They are somewhat limited apps, but still it's kind of like, say, using WhatsApp on a smartphone, even though it's more limited, and even though it's more difficult to type in the keypad, there are sort of smart features. So then a bunch of people said, well, but hang on a minute, isn't that kind of like a smartphone then? Uh, and the answer to that is no, actually, it's not. It's quasi-smart. There's some smartphone-ish functionality, but it's actually still a dumb phone. So uh, in the first half of the video, I'll talk about uh, the Nokia 2720. And in the second half, I'm going to talk about some of the details, you know, as to why Android and KaiOS are not the same thing. And a dumb phone running KaiOS, even though it's a little bit smart, is a very different animal. So first, the review of the Nokia 2720 Flip 4G. Okay, so here we have this is the Nokia 3310, it's a 3G phone. This guy is the slider, he's the Nokia 8110 4G that I reviewed previously, and then here you have the new Nokia 2720 Flip 4G. As you can see, it's got a slightly larger screen, it has really, really big honking buttons, and on the outside you have this cute little screen there that shows you the time and date and some other fun things. Um, the first thing I want to point out is that here you have a comparison with my thumb. Let's get that centered. Uh, you see how small that little pointer pad is, and then you see my other thumb on this one. There's obviously a difference in size there, but now let's compare that. I mentioned previously that this thing was really hard to use, uh, even with my non-gorilla thumbs. In the new 2720 Flip, you can see there is a substantial difference in size in the pointy-clicky thing, uh, which I still don't know what the heck to call. Um, also, the, the keys for typing, as I just said, they're freaking huge. This thing is an absolute joy to use compared to all the other previous offerings, and uh, at least for, like, typing, I love it. Especially this guy, you can... it's very, very, very easy to use compared to the other models. Um, also, it's a flip phone, so if we do a quick little size comparison, you can see uh, when it's folded up, it's a little bit thicker, but it's shorter, so this guy, the 2720 Flip, very easily fits into a pocket. Uh, I love it for that reason, and um, call quality is fine. It's, it's the same as, as the 8110. In fact, these two phones are pretty much identical in terms of hardware, uh, in terms of features, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AGPS, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the screen on the 2720 is actually slightly bigger. Uh, trying to get rid of reflections there. But it's the same resolution. So, um, yeah, it's it's pretty much exactly what you wanted the 8110 to be, except better. Um, there's really not... I mean, aside from, you know, the size of the buttons and the form factor and everything, it's it's pretty much the same phone. Um, I think it even has the same processor, same amount of RAM, same um, uh, micro SD card size, it's dual SIM, it's literally exactly the same phone as the 8110, but in this different form factor, bigger buttons, way easier to use because of, of this whole thing. Um, so what I want to do is actually show you a couple, couple things here. This is the... Uh, how are we going to do this? Oh, by the way, um, it's not a super duper phone with oleophobic coating. You can see uh, the fingerprints. The, it, the thing just sucks up fingerprints like crazy, including on the screen. So, um, yeah, that's maybe a little drawback. But So what I want to do is, as you can see here, 
we have the, the, the latest version of KaiOS in the home screen, and you can uh, see here I have WhatsApp installed, but what I want to do is I'm actually connected to Wi-Fi, ah, just temporarily. I want to actually show you if I go to the KaiOS store. Couldn't show this last time because I didn't have a proper connection. Um, now, as I said, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Twitter are available. Uh, you can see those here. They are somewhat limited. You get basic functionality, but uh, they're somewhat limited. You have a bunch of games, some utilities, and um, as you note, all of these apps are basically free. Uh, like you can have fake call. Want to get out? Receive a fake call. I mean, there's, I think there's something like 130 or 140 apps available, and they're increasing in number uh, each week. So, uh, and then you have utilities, you have lifestyle, which is just some crazy things. You have some, some basic news apps, you know, Bitcoin, whatever. Uh, entertainment, those are mostly silly. Some health things like Sasha Caffeine, which helps you to control caffeine intake and become healthier. Okay, so <laughs> the quality of the apps is not exactly really high, but keep in mind that these phones are dumb phones and they're designed to appeal to uh, literally like a billion or two people in the developing world. So um, most likely all the major providers uh, are going to be, you know, social networking companies and that sort of thing. They're going to be introducing apps on this platform because they're going to want access to uh, those huge emerging markets. So you can also get the Holy Bible or the Quran app if you'd like. But uh, one thing I want to do is uh, I want to show that if you select an app, you cannot uninstall the Google apps, not easily. But WhatsApp, Facebook, and Twitter, which are there, uh, you can uninstall. You just tap the button. Yes, I want to uninstall WhatsApp. Okay, there, it just uninstalled it. And I want to show how fast it installs the app, so I'll just say get. And it's downloading. And it's done. Now, <laughs> as you can see, uh, we back out of here, and there it is again. Uh, no, it is on my home screen somewhere. It probably put it way down at the bottom. There it is. It's back. Um, now that is actually, uh, that leads me to my next topic. So, as I said, that's the Nokia 2720. It's literally the same phone as the 8110, but in a different form factor. Bigger buttons, bigger little control pad. Um, it's actually, there's a couple other little minor differences. I had a little bit of trouble with the 8110 when I first powered it up and I typed in the pin code for my SIM. Uh, occasionally, if I didn't wait a few seconds, it would tell me that I was typing the code in incorrectly and I'd go, no, I didn't. And I'd type it again, and sometimes a third time, and then it would take. Uh, that problem has been eliminated with this phone, which also has the absolute latest and greatest version of KaiOS. I think it's like 2.5, something like that. Um, so the one thing that irritated me about the 8110 is actually fixed in this guy. As I said, great form factor. Otherwise, it's literally the same phone as that uh, in terms of features and everything. So, but as I just showed, when I installed WhatsApp, you saw that um, it just kind of went bloop and it was installed. And the reason for that is because all KaiOS apps, including the Google ones, are basically web pages. They are web apps. They are uh, progressive web apps, actually. If you don't know what a progressive web app is, you can watch this video. I will also put a link down in the description, so you can expand the description and click that link at the end of this one if you want. That video, I talk about progressive web apps, and what PWAs are in brief is just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, and it's basically an app that, like an app for a smartphone, but you can also run it on a desktop computer. It's sort of like... Um, it's kind of like a window that encapsulates a web page, so it looks like an app, and it runs like an app, and it feels like an app, but all it is is a window on your phone or on your computer that's literally loading a web page. Um, as I say, watch the PWA video if you want more information on that. But the point here is that KaiOS apps are essentially websites. They are web apps. And what that means is not only do they install and uninstall very, very quickly, but they're very, very small in size. And that takes us into a brief explanation of what the differences between Android and KaiOS are. Okay, so let's take a quick peek at the architecture 
of Android. This is it. In the left, you have your stack. At the bottom, you have your Linux kernel. Then on top of that is a hardware abstraction layer, native libraries, and the Android runtime, the Android framework, and applications. Now, as you can see, the whole stack is basically Google. It's Google stuff. Uh, the applications, the blue box at the very top, those are the apps that you run and know and love. Those are written by Google and others. Google's are, of course, uh, proprietary usually. Other people's also proprietary, but, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now, if we take a peek at KaiOS, it's obviously substantially different. At the bottom, you have a Linux kernel called Gonk. Uh, that is not Android, but actually it uses chunks of the Android open source project for things like drivers and, you know, how do you make... Uh, you know, the GPS Go or the Sound Go, but those are open source chunks of code that anyone can review. Uh, there's nothing sneaky in them. Then on top of that, you have the Gecko browser layer, which is made by Mozilla and others. And then on top of that, you have the Blue Box, which is your actual apps. And again, those are made by KaiOS and others. Uh, in this case, the Google apps are also made uh, by Google. Now, if you really want to get crazy, here is a chart of the actual architecture of KaiOS, and you'll notice that uh, in the lower right-hand corner it says Android HAL BSP. So the sort of light blue boxes with uh, bluish text, those are actually the chunks of uh, the Android open source project code. But you'll notice that Gecko and Gaia, Gaia is the actual interface that you're using, and Gecko is the web browser that the interface is actually running in. All that stuff is not Google. So the difference here is that instead of having uh, basically an entire operating system uh, made by Google, some of which is proprietary and some of which is not, KaiOS is basically a few bits and bobs just to make things easier at a very low level, and then all the rest of it is made by Mozilla and other people. And then Google partnered with KaiOS just to put Google's apps on top of that. Right. So that's pretty much it. Um, Android and KaiOS are two very different animals. Uh, there's one other thing to mention, which is that uh, the number of sensors on a KaiOS dumb phone is very different from on a smartphone. I have my old Nexus 5X smartphone here, which I use as a camera for making videos, and uh, the number of sensors that it has as a smartphone are a front camera, a rear camera, a proximity sensor, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, a magnetometer, a fingerprint sensor, a barometer, and a Hall effect sensor. So what that means is that all of those sensors can be used to detect, uh, say, the, uh, the orientation of the phone, the acceleration of the phone, the proximity of me or another object to the phone. Uh, it can sense magnetic fields. It can detect the, the barometric pressure, the atmospheric pressure. So it can actually, from that sort of metadata, it can detect changes in elevation. And obviously, all those sensors can be used to hoover up data. But what about our little... KaiOS powered Nokia dumb phones. They have a front camera, low resolution, GPS, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth. That's it. There are no, there aren't 50 gajillion sensors. There's no, there's no nothing. So the sources of data that are used to track you in clever ways are simply not present in this phone. So that's another big difference between KaiOS and uh, Android. And finally, I have to note that uh, the KaiOS app developer agreement even tells you to limit the amount of network data that your apps use. So in other words, if you're trying to develop an app for KaiOS, it's essentially a web app. And when you do that, because KaiOS is used on phones in the developing world, uh, and because in the developing world data is still relatively expensive, the KaiOS folks know that they have to limit the amount of data that people are going to use, which means uh, they even forbid you from doing things like VOIP, like, like voice calls using the data network. So as a KaiOS app developer, you're even restricted. You're not only restricted in terms of the number of sensors that are available and blah, 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 but also in terms of the amount of data that you could possibly send up to your server. Uh, the apps themselves have to be small and quickly and easily installable. Uh, you can't make voice calls. You can't hoover up all kinds of data. You can't send all kinds of data. Um, it's just sort of like by, by definition, because this is a low-end phone and because the way the operating system is made, because the way the apps are essentially web apps, uh, because it's being used in, in the developing world where bandwidth is sort of at a premium, these 4G dumb phones are 
essentially designed to minimize all the things that makes hoovering up lots of data and violating your privacy easy in the Western world with smartphones. So yeah, if you're looking for a good 4G dumb phone, especially if you like flip phones, do check out the Nokia 2720 Flip. It is finally a 4G dumb phone that I'm 100% happy with, uh, especially because of the big buttons uh, and the form factor. Uh, the functionality is perfect for me. The only problem is that I paid 99 euros for this thing. They're still a little bit expensive. They just came out like a month ago. I've had this one and been using it for just about almost a month. And right now they're very expensive for what they are. Um, I would probably recommend just waiting until the holiday season because I'm sure they're going to go on sale. As I recall, this 8110 slider, this guy was also close to 100 when it was first released, and now it's available for 59. Uh, so check out holiday sales, and uh, if necessary, just you know wait a few months, and you should be able to pick the 2720 up uh, much cheaper than it is now. So. Right, that's it. Uh, for more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.